I'd come to the Bahamas for a vacation, not to teach skin diving. But this eager young man wouldn't take no for an answer. His name was Bob Hicks. I'd never seen a less promising pupil. He checked out okay as a swimmer, but he took to life underwater the way a fish does to mountain climbing. I was sorry, but there were no two ways about it. This lad belonged topside. And at the end of our third session, that's where I took him. When we got to the surface, I didn't even wait till we were on the boat to tell him that his lessons were over. I don't have the time for you to learn how to dive the way you should. Look, I've got to learn how to dive now, please. Why? You don't like to dive. You're on the verge of panic all the time down there. I've still got to learn how. Now, are you going to teach me or aren't you? I'm sorry, Bob. Just don't have the time. I'm supposed to be on my vacation, you know. Okay. But if anything happens, remember you're responsible. <laughs> Later that day, I went ashore for dinner, still mulling over Bob Hicks' threat or warning. Hey, Nelson. The name was Morell, the man said, Vincent Morell. And he had a present for me. A dollar bill. There'll be four more of them, Nelson. Uh, depending on the headway you make from now on. Headway on what? We're teaching Bob Hicks to skin dive. Now, you were going to stop, I understand. Did he tell you why? Not uh, directly. He was crying about it a little this afternoon in the lobby of my hotel. Oh, by the way, uh, don't tell him about our deal. He wouldn't like it. Okay. Why should you pay me 500 bucks to teach somebody else how to die? Friendship. I don't like my friends to be frustrated. See you later, old man. It was an off hour, but I was having an early dinner to have time to chew my thoughts along with my food. Hey, Albert. I didn't order this. Compliments of the ladies, sir. Oh, quite a switch, huh? Anything can happen in the Bahamas, Mr. Nelson. Oh, don't bother, Mr. Nelson. I really can't stay. I have another appointment. I'm Carol Sloan. I hope you'll forgive me. What for? This is the nicest thing that's happened to me in a long time. It's a bribe. Oh? Think that's necessary? I don't. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. I uh, have a friend, a young man. A uh, lucky young man. He's very depressed. You should have seen him in here this afternoon. The name of your friend wouldn't happen to be uh, Hicks by any chance, would it? Bob Hicks? That's right. Bob told me that you cut off his lessons today without notice. Now, this is a kind of an apple for the teacher, huh? for the teacher who's going to reopen school tomorrow morning. Good night, Mr. Nelson. Don't tell me you muffed it, sir. Yeah, it looks like. That wolf at the bar was a little too fast for me. Well, better luck next time, sir. Uh, maybe tomorrow, after school. P.S. Next morning, I reopened school. And Bob Hicks surprised me by starting to make the grade.
someone else was keeping an eye on Bob's progress. I didn't know who, but I meant to find out. Him. An army of frogmen could have hidden in this coral reef without ever being found. But I was troubled and puzzled. Why all this interest in Bob Hicks, boy skin diver? Hi. Well, hello there. May I come aboard? Be my guest. Thanks. You got another apple for the teacher? Oh, no. Hi. Hi. How is it going? Well, at least when I go down there now, I feel fairly sure I'm going to come up again. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You two haven't met. Mike Nelson, this is Carol Sloan. Carol's a friend of mine. Happy to know you, Mike. Haven't we met somewhere before? Uh, could be. I've been there. So have I. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> oh, it's nothing. Hurry up and get your gear. We got lots to do. You uh, two known each other for quite a while, have you? Oh, yes. He's engaged to my kid sister back in the States. Oh. You live here in the Bahamas, do you? No. I'm just down here for a month. And then Bob popped in from Bermuda on his way home from Europe. He took a cottage next door to me, just beyond the point there. Hey, he said it was a kind of a spur of the moment deal. Yeah. Had trouble with a plane and tend to land. That uh, plane ought to be fixed up by about now, shouldn't it? Yes. But uh, he likes the Bahamas so much he decided to stay. All right. And try to dive, huh? Yes. Tell me. Are you ready? Oh, yes, Bob. Uh, let's go, then. Goodbye, Mike. Hey, thanks. I didn't know whether to believe Carol or not. Now, one thing was certain. Someone wasn't coming clean about something. A little later, I stumbled onto one of those people. Hi, Morel. Hi, Nelson. I'm making any progress with Hicks? Don't you know? No. How could I? You were down there watching both of us, weren't you? Are you kidding? Would I pay you $500 to teach him how to skin dive if I knew how to myself? Doesn't make much sense to me. No, of course not. I've got something for you. I promised you these, and there's 200 more coming. Ah, uh, not until I know what it's for. Oh, I told you, I'm a friend of his. I don't think he knows you from Adam. What's your angle, anyway? Ever hear of Lloyd's of London? I'm at the Royal Hotel. Let me know when Hicks is able to dive by himself. When an insurance company like Lloyd's of London is interested in a man, it can only mean one thing. And when that man literally hates being underwater, yet forces himself to become a pretty fair diver, there's got to be a connection. Peeping Tom again. Morale had denied being able to dive. Maybe this was some other character. A 
I didn't have any better luck this time than before. Then I saw still another member of the underwater PTA. It had to be a different one, because he was in a different area. Who were these underwater snoopers? If Morell had lied and was one of them, I still had no clue to the second. Now the second diver was gone too. This whole thing was getting weirder and weirder. One more question bothered me as I swam back. Did Bob Hicks know about these two watchdogs? He had given no sign of even seeing them. It was time for a showdown between Hicks and me. Well, I think I finally figured it out. Yeah, what's that? Why you want to learn how to dive? There's something valuable down there, and you know exactly where it is, right? Suppose it is. What about it? Well, that depends on what it is. It might be stolen merchandise. And there might even be a reward for it from some outfit like uh, Lloyd's of London, maybe? Well, you're way off base. No, Bob. I think we'd better tell him. What are you talking about? We have to, Bob. Please believe me. You're right, Mike. When Bob dropped in to see me, he was on his way back from Amsterdam with a package of diamonds. He works for a diamond importer in New York. Uh, what's the name of that diamond dealer? Gellhorn Incorporated. Well, go on. He had the stones in a money belt. We went swimming, and the belt broke and sank. It's that simple. What was this? That's none of your business. Please, Bob. Not far from this boat. Why not let him help you look for it? That is, if he wants to. I don't mind. Well, all right, we'll give it a crack tomorrow morning, OK? OK, by me. I think I'll get into something dry. Is there a Gilhorns Incorporated? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but just the same, it won't be long before he's onto the real story. Oh, that won't matter. Oh, no? Not if you find the belt first. I tried to check Carol's story with New York, but this was Friday. 6 p.m. Friday, and everything was shut up tight for the weekend. I learned that there was a diamond outfit named Gellhorn, but that's all. Nothing on Bob Hicks or Carol Sloan. Who were they, anyway? Decent people in trouble or a couple of crooks? began to get an idea who the second diver was. The wolf who followed Carol out of the restaurant a few nights back. Hi. OK to come aboard? Uh, who's the big attraction? Carol Sloan or Bob Hicks? Hicks, mainly. But the girl's a corker, isn't she? Sorry to get your floor wet. I know I should have done this on deck. But this is a little more private, huh? Yes. Uh, my name's Powery, by the way, Steve Powery, just to prove it. Uh, Washington, huh? I know some fellas that work out of that office. Charlie Dexter, you know him? Yes, I know Charlie Dexter. Describe him. Oh, well, he's about 5'10", 185 pounds, blonde, crew cut, went to Amherst. Uh, know his wife? What's her name? Shirley, and she makes a mean Caesar salad. They live on Q Street in a red brick house, and they're owned by a dachshund named Wilhelm. Hey, why are you so interested in Bob Hicks? What's he done? 
Did you ever hear the term defector? Yeah. That's a guy who goes over the opposition. Why is Bob Hicks a defector? Well, we don't know for sure. He was carrying top secret microfilm from Europe to Washington. Microfilm? And a money belt, huh? Yeah. That's how valuable they are. He'd have to keep them on his person. He wouldn't dare let them out of his sight. Well, he was coming back via Bermuda, but for some reason he cut out of there. Yeah, his plane set down for repairs. Yes, it did. But what's he doing here in the Bahamas? Oh, he's visiting his friend, Carol Sloan. He said that he went swimming with her and lost his money belt. Now he's taking up scuba diving, see if he can find him, I guess. Well, why didn't he contact Washington? I don't know. Somebody else looking for that belt, you know? Someone on this island? Yeah. A fellow called uh, Vincent Morrell. He's at the Royal Hotel. Does Hicks know him? Have they been in contact? I don't know. What do you know about Morrell? Uh, he's paid me uh, 300 bucks already to teach Hicks how to dive. Owes me 200 more. Pretty good pay, huh? I was hoping this was just a case of poor judgment. That Hicks was trying to get the films back by himself rather than confess he lost them, but now I'm not so sure. Nelson, this is important. Those films, I can't tell you how important. Yeah. I can imagine. Now maybe I can catch two birds with one skin diver. Hmm? Me. I set up a meeting with Morrell. I told him that Bob Hicks was ready to go it alone now if he wanted him to. I collected the $200 I had coming. Then I made him a proposition. How about hiring me to finish the job? Hire you to finish the job? What do you mean? Oh, you want to get back with your outfit insured, don't you? Mm-hmm. Whatever's in that money belt down below. Who told you it was a money belt? Hicks. I conned him into it. Keep talking. Well, he told me that he lost it while he was in swimming. Where would he go swimming? Right out in front of where he's staying now, don't you think? So? So? You make it worth my while. I'll be in the lookout. I'll see where he goes in. I'll know the exact location of that belt. You'll have it made. I have it made already. You taught Hicks to dive. Now he'll be able to recover the belt himself, and he won't keep it. Well, thank you, Nelson, but I don't need your help. If Morrell was right, Bob Hicks was a defector. Next morning, I got my chance to find out. As I anticipated, Bob appeared in front of his house ready to dive. I was waiting for him offshore. I had figured he couldn't find the money belt. He did not look for it. I persuaded him to surface with me. There we could talk it over. What are you doing down here? I want to help you find that belt. I can find it myself. Uh -huh. You haven't yet. I don't think you will. You don't have any system for searching. Well, I suppose you do, huh? Yeah. I got everything we need right down below to do it. Want to give it a try? Okay. I had already prepared for a systematic search. With a rope tied off to a rock, we could methodically cover a given area until we found what we were looking for. Everything that looks like a rock underwater isn't. And finally, there it was.
been expecting Vincent Morrell. I hadn't been expecting this. I had my hands full getting rid of the spear gun before I could use it again. But Bob Hicks was totally unprepared to face this kind of action underwater. He had me at a disadvantage, and he made the most of it. My air hose was cut before I could reverse the odds. I had no choice but to head for the surface and shuck my gear. totally at the mercy of this old pro. He fought as best he could, but he didn't have a chance. Morrell's knife cut deep into his shoulder. I was boiling mad when I got back into the fight. fighting till Morrell was unconscious. I got Morrell to the cabin of my boat. Steve Powery was waiting there to find out who was doing what to whom. diamonds. What is it? I can't tell you. It's secret. It's top secret. Look, take it down to the American consul. Well, thank you, Alfred, but I didn't order anything. Compliments of the gentleman, miss. Well, well. But I thought he had left the islands. Without saying goodbye, miss? Mr. Nelson would hardly do a thing like that. Well, I should say not. Is uh, that what this is for? Nice to have known you and so long. Well, I really haven't known you. I'd like to. I'll drink to that. Oh? What about my competition? Steve Powery, you mean? He's on his way back to Washington with Bob. And Morel's in jail. No competition in sight. Well, then what are we waiting for? Let's go out and do the town, huh? That's the nicest thing that's happened to me in a long time. Alfred, you were right. Can I beg your pardon, sir? Anything can happen in the Bahamas. Yes, sir. Hi there. I'm Lloyd Bridges. Skin diving is certainly a lot of fun, and it's full of adventure. See some more of it again next week, huh? When there'll be another excursion into that fabulous underwater world of Sea Hunt. <laughs> <laughs>